the talk is about any optional variant, the C++ vocabulary types, and how did we get them, and how to use them. I hope I will give some answers to that. Uh, the talk will be about 40 minutes, I hope, uh, and the introduction was a short talk, an ounce, uh, a little bit material is uh, found after that, and so we will see. Uh, some uh, information about me, uh, because it's uh, also important for this talk. Uh, I I studied uh, teacher for math and physics uh, at the Pädagogische Hochschule Dresden, uh, which does not exist anymore. Uh, got my PhD in theoretical physics at the Technical University in Dresden, and uh, was working at various uh, institutions in the private sector and uh, state sector <coughs> for education. Uh, for a long time, I'm uh, a member of the schüler Bechen Syndrome, which is a uh, very special institution which uh, teaches uh, interested school, school people about programming. And I'm also a member of uh, the committee for uh, regional uh, competition in informatics. Uh, the Sächsische Informatik Wettbewerb. Uh, I'm running a little website down there. And now I'm a school teacher at Dreikeli Schule here in Dresden. Um, so I got a full circle from there to there. And my interest in C uh, was or was started here. Uh, when I was working about my PhD and was teaching C++ for about 12 years, now it's more a hobby. So, uh, what today on the talk uh, about this new types and how to, they will fit the type system and uh, about some other things and uh, what will be in the future in C++ expected. So let's start uh, with something. Uh, the last time I gave a talk here uh, I made a little game, uh, a version of Bingo of C++. Uh, today I will play another game with you. What is in the name? If you have a line like that. You can give me any hints. Uh, Okay, but more from uh, the perspective of the compiler, not so much from the writer of the program. The name is something. What is it about in this line? Suppose C. A variable? Yes. And this variable has something. Type. Yes. Type is here. It's used. Here. It's something. Others. See? A lifetime? Yes. From there to closing brackets, maybe. What else? Yes. Okay. It has to live somewhere. Depends. Depends, yes. 
Uh, it has a size. There's a number of bits or bytes in it. You have a double representation, zeros and ones. Uh, there is a type, uh, which means how we interpret these bits or bytes. And also with uh, the type is associated what operations we can do with it. And also may have an address in memory. So uh, I don't want to go deep into the type theory. Uh, from a mathematical standpoint, a, a type is a set of values combined with a set of operations on that. Uh, the number of possible values of cardinality is somewhat related to the number of bytes we need for that type. Uh, a little bit we will talk about uh, the cross product in the mathematical sense. If we have a point, we have a x coordinate and y coordinate, uh, which give us a cross product type. Uh, it's also known from database theory. Not so familiar of we are with some types, and I don't want to dive into type hierarchies and names of types and types of types and so on. Uh, we have to be careful, names can lie. So, this talk starts with nothing. Uh, but, really, sorry, um, the name nothing isn't nothing, it's a lambda. You can call it, but it doesn't uh, return anything, it doesn't do anything. Uh, what's, interest, what's interesting to me, uh, you can return a void. It's really compiled. So, uh, to get more serious, uh, must something have an address? Must it have a name, a value, a type, or some data? No. If you have an R value, it can reside in a register, perhaps, or an operation result. Uh, it can be unnationalized memory or garbage after use. It does not have a type. Okay, the black house has a type. It's an address for something we don't know which type it is. And there don't have to be data. You have to type that. So, uh, the contrast to nothing is everything. Yes, uh, 42 is the answer to everything, to the question of everything, according to Douglas Adams. Uh, and it happens that, that the star, also in the type system, uh, or sorry, the, the file system names every file. For everything, and we don't have time to talk about everything. So let's talk about many things. Uh, this star is also in the cardinality of the entity relationship model in database design. You can have zero or one or a fixed number or any number of something. And I uh, was musing about what about uh, 
a number of data units and a number of types, and there is a combination of that. So I will introduce you to a matrix of data and types. In the old days, there was Fortran. It was very simple. You had a variable with a fixed type. You can hold one data unit in it, or if you want to have many or fixed size of data members, uh, you had an array. Uh, if you had a table, each column of the table would be an array in Fortran. No more possibilities. Uh, you can't or you couldn't uh, say, I want to have a table row. So let's see. We have a table row. It's fucked. Product fucked. It's a photon. A photon has now. Okay. Uh, so. So far, so good. But. Before C, there was a famous invention, pointers or references, and uh, the inventor called it my million dollar mistake. In the strive for something which became Pascal later, and uh, this. References, or as we call them, pointers, all these dangerous things. And I don't know if you know Herbert Schild, uh, an infamous book author who uh, wrote this sentence because pointers are such dangerous things, it's better to never generate one. So, what is dangerous about pointers? Any hints? Point to nowhere. Uh, it can point to somewhere which is uninitialized, uninitialized memory or garbage. Um, if you have a pointer, we do not know if it points to one object or an array of object. It's possible to. Get that pointer arithmetics, and you can go a step further beside that object. What is there? Is it out of bounds of that array? And are you the owner of the object? Have you to, uh, do you have to delete it once or two times? Does someone? point to that object after you deleted it, and we have two versions for one object and an array of objects, which is fine. So, uh, I would call it a disaster area of C++, of C, to have pointers in many uh, fields of this matrix. Uh, if you want to have an array with unknown bounds, you have to deal with a dynamic point of uh, unions with pointers or a pointer to anything, void pointer. Uh, we got a little battle. Which version of C++? Yeah. 
this, I would think, is the best achievement there. You don't have to handle with dynamic pointers for uh, dynamic arrays anymore. Uh, we have a memory optimization for a fixed number of Boolean values. And yay, we have a struct with two elements. So, next version. We got pointers which deal with uh, ownership. We just made it. We get the tuple, cross product of many types, and we get a fixed sized array. Okay. We can return an array from a function. C plus plus eleven. So and now uh, we have something more. We have an optional which points to something or not something, nothing. Uh, we have a variant which corresponds to union, and we have an any type in seventeen. What's the state of the union? Uh, what's the problem with unions in C++? It's okay in C, but not in C++. Because who cares about constructors and destructors? So in C++ 98, it was forbidden to have arrays uh, of non-trivial type. In C11, the rules were a little bit relaxed. You have to roll your own constructor and destructor for the union. Now, which is tricky, now we have a variant. We can put any of these animals one at a time in a variant. So, and any should be a replacement for a star. And uh, optional is like a nullable type in a database. So, uh, the next I will show you is, mm, I would call it an, a reference table. Mm, it's a little bit small in type. You can make an optional from arguments or by assignment, or you can replace it directly, giving arguments. To the constructor, uh, you can ask if there is a value, a value like a pointer, or you can call a method for that. You can go to that value, also like a pointer, or with a method. The method is called, uh, called red because it uh, throws an exception if you don't have a value, and uh, it's a very nice thing. The committee decided if you go to the star optional, you will have undefined behavior. Sorry. You can call a method and give it another value if you like. You can Clean the value from the top, and you have an exception for that. So, for variant, you have a list of types. Um, if you want to have a variant with no object, you have to put a monostate object in the first place. Uh, the first type also uh, is required to have a trivial constructor, so that a non-empty variant is initialized with an object of the first type of the list. So you can uh, assign or replace values, like in optional. Um, you can get to that value by its type, 
if all types are different, or by the index of the time. And we will see later how we visit an object. But we have to have a visitor. And you can ask which object is in it and get uh, the number of the type during one time. Or ask if it holds a value. It may as well. The any type you can assign or replace. You can ask for a value if it has a value, and you can pass it to anything. It throws when the type does not match. There's another any cast if you take the address of the any object, you get null pointer if it's not this type. So you can ask for the type, and it's uh, the type ID of the type. You can reset that object and it will make it So, uh, my interest in these types is uh, from, the from the perspective of teachability. And I would say optional is the simplest type, and the others are more problematic. It's not for beginners. So, and, uh, there is a uh, group of members of the committee, uh, the direction working group, uh, which in February uh, made a round about these types, uh, the dramatic differences of the interfaces of these types, and they have a long history as independent proposals. This wouldn't be too bad if the reasons was significant improvements during that process. They are not very really happy about that, I think. So, um, how to use a, a variant? If we have a variant or a vector of variant objects, car and double string, uh, and we want to do something with each element of this vector, we have to call a visit and we have to have a struct called a visitor which has uh, operator parentheses for each type it wants to visit and somehow uh, these uh, operators match the uh, type of the object which is in that element at that time. Um, it's bad to uh, make the struct before you call it, so sometimes you want to build such a struct uh, from lambdas, uh, and it's possible with a tiny, tiny bit which isn't in the standard yet. It's uh, a struct uh, which uh, inherits from a list of types and uh, says I will use the operator of these types one after another. Uh, variant, variated templates were new in C++11, uh, but using this uh, variadic is new in 17, and uh, what we also need is a, a template argument uh, uh, deduction guide here, uh, which gives us uh, a rule uh, when we have a constructor, which type of object 
uh, or which type of template is to instantiate. Not so uh, uh, easy to grasp, but and hopefully this, these two lines will get into this number, maybe with another name. So uh, I think uh, variants have uh, a good place in programming. Uh, there are examples to define finite state machines with types instead of values. So we can check uh, some uh, things about at, at compile time, not at runtime. Uh, the any type is, I think, more complicated. Right? Uh, you can ask if the address of the any object is uh, castable into a pointer, you can use the pointer to go to that object. If you leave that uh, address operator out, uh, you will throw any, if you do not match the type. So this, this last string or character array value, uh, it will throw here. If you try to match it to that. And I think it's, uh, it will be dangerous uh, to miss the difference. So, uh, for optional, there are also some use cases. Uh, one I find uh, very uh, simple is if you have a vector, you can ask for the lowest value in that vector, but uh, min element uh, gives you only a value or a hint to the value if it is not an empty vector. If the vector is empty, you can't give a minimum element in this vector. So you can have or can return an optional to an integer from an integer vector. Uh, and you can construct it from empty braces here. And those will be the weight, I suppose. And here you can ask if there is such a value you can go to that value like with a pointer. Uh, this optional as uh, conveying a result from a function. Uh, there are other ideas, uh, and it's not over yet, I think. Um, it's Christmas next, but there's going on a lot of discussion. Uh, there's a war uh, about uh, should it be possible to have uh, optional references? Uh, the suit optional does not allow it. Yeah. Uh, and there are also ideas uh, yeah. what if you have an optional and want to do something else with that which also can fail and then do something some other things also can fail and what then? And there are is a there's a proposal about uh, concatenating such operations for optionals, which is, I think, useful. <coughs> but uh, returning an optional from a function uh, gives you the object or nothing. You can't transport any information uh, about what was going wrong. So, uh, there are other ideas uh, which relate to the result type of function in Rust where you can get a value or an error. Uh, so there are also 
some uh, proposals. Uh, there is, or there will be, uh, the expected type in the experimental namespace. I think if I read the papers correctly, I'm not sure about it. Uh, and there are other proposals for maybe future version of C++ mod 20 um, to uh, return a value or uh, return an exception instead of that the zero overhead maybe in cooperation with uh, the C standard which is also interesting I missed the the uh, colon colon operator here. I call it the ladybug operator. So, uh, there's a lot of things which uh, can go in the next standard. I think there will be more interesting things in the future. Starship operator and uh, any of the decisions we made in the standard uh, will have implications for what is going in the future. So, uh, that was my talk, my little ideas, and I hope I gave you some inspiration for the discussion afterwards. Okay, half and half. Thank you. So, maybe we have some questions we can discuss uh, here. Uh, sorry. Um, if you have a finite state machine, you have to have a state uh, Turing machine or something like that. No? Um, uh, you go to the left with a Turing machine, you go to the right, you uh, uh, have to um, change just zeros to ones or something. And each uh, operation in the finite state machine can lead to another state, but it has to have, or has to be a state in the machine. Uh, the number of states is fixed. And previously it was uh, made by enums, mostly. Uh, and Enums were not so safe because uh, enums uh, were ints. Now we have enum classes, which is better. Uh, you can ha have only these uh, uh, values you declare for in the enum class. Uh, but I think that uh, by having uh, types for the state, you can have uh, more uh, checking uh, during computation state. And, uh, otherwise, you have to check in running or debugging mode. But, but you want to represent the states only by the types, or in, in the end you still have a value of the states? Uh, no, it would, it, it would be a state value of yeah. a variant type, uh, but the state would be a type in this yeah. variant. So, yeah, but in the end you have both um, you know, have yeah. Yeah. And 
you can pack the type with some extra information. It's like in Rust where an enum is basically a variant and each enum field can have data as well. So we are not uh, limited to having types or values, it's the same. Yeah. If you give something a name, it might be a type or uh, just a value. One thing I found missing in a variant is uh, that the index for the variant is just an int. And an int is seemingly unrelated to your variant. It would be nice, or I have developed my own variant type where uh, if you ask it for an index, you get an index that also knows what uh, index relates to what type. So you don't store the value anymore, but you know which type was in. And often this might be enough to basically know in a, in a parser what state it was in. So you don't have to remember the full state of the parser it was, but you know, okay, there was a brace before that. Because you know it's this type. And it also makes it more safe to handle the integers because you can say, give me the, the index of this type and then compare it to the real value you have right now. And it's only possible to compare those two if they are from the same variant and not different variants. Any other questions or discussion points? Yeah. Who has used a standard variant in programming with C? Who has So you have shown us untested code? No, I tested. We can go to a live session. <laughs> uh, how's the compiler support? Uh, the compilers are supported in uh, C++ 2017. Yes. Um, which versions? GCC 8? Or um, what do you mean? GCC 7. 7 already. Okay. Most of these are already in boost for like 10 years or something, then uh, you can get most of these with slightly lesser. It was, it was not com compiler magic uh, yeah. involved, it was only library. Yeah. C17, it's hard to use the overloaded trick because you have to write a lot of code to do it. To, to use what? The overloaded. The overloaded yeah. trick. Yeah. For what? What the magic there? I thought it was valid code. In C17, but not before. Uh, because of the, the time the template deduction guide is new in 17 ah, and also the, the yeah. using uh, the separated types. Oh, I see. We need the operator bracket. Before you had to inherit from all lambdas at one, yeah. one at a time, and then use the uh, call operator. Uh, I see. Um, I never used um, a void pointer since ages. Um, I have no clue where the practical um, use case is for the any type. Um, void star is mostly 
used in, or was mostly used in uh, graphics interfaces for Windows, etc. to uh, loop some information through uh, the library to some handler. And you have to have to know which type you point to inside the handler. Uh, and uh, the void pointer was mostly the, the last argument of such function with uh, a lot of arguments, uh, very um, cool interface of these functions mostly. Yeah, but um, if I design mm -hmm. some uh, yeah. type interfaces and class hierarchies, um, when do I reach the point where I say, okay, now I have to use the any type to um, solve some problem instead of um, doing what I do now and um, just use um, another way? Uh, which is so any type. Uh, it's a, it's a replacement for a cast, and mostly the void pointer was uh, used in the C library interfaces. Yeah, it comes from the void pointer. The C++ we think have no so much, not so much need for void pointers like in C libraries. So, uh, there. Or in use cases where you have C libraries between, and you have to go through that. And uh, on the C side of these C libraries, maybe you can use the any type and uh, check for the type you have. Uh, there are exceptions, etc. Uh, in C, if you have only a cast. You don't have any such uh, uh, tools to uh, debug uh, what is going on. But basically, um, you can also think of an any type as a type erasure about the storage of the type. So basically, you can keep track of everything. If you destruct the any type, it will also destruct what is contained. So, for example, if you have a property system where you, the user basically knows what he stored and he will always uh, have to use the same type to recover it and your storage system of your properties is not interested in doing anything with these properties except providing storage for the end user. And this is a perfect use case because the any type basically does everything you need. If you need more, you have to write overall your own type erasure with functionality you need. So the any type stores the value of the type, a destructor, and how to copy it, how to move it, and so on. Uh, if you say type erasure, um, I use Tabber even today. I um, write um, some wrapper uh, uh, class and uh, um, some. Uh, um, how do I call it? Um, a, a, a structure which um, um, tells which which um, functions I might want to support and. Um, yeah. Um, and um, the any type can be used to simplify this procedure? No, it is a type erasure. So basically, it covers everything that you need to store any value. So, so it will type erase about the uh, copy constructor, about the move constructor, about the destructor, and that's it. Okay. And basically recovering the type ID, that's the only functionality you get. What about, uh, is it any of any conflict with strict aliasing? Do you like, 
have this object as a parameter. If it has type, and then you want somehow to do this any magic and to accept this form? No, okay. it's not possible. And, and the any type also stores the actual type stored in the runtime. So you have, uh, in addition to the storage, you have the type ID in there, and it will throw if you try to get anything other out of it than okay. what you put in. So that's the magic. So it's basically quite solved with ownership. And any cast is it's a language actually? Uh, it's a library. It's a library. It's a library. It's a library. <laughs> Thank you again. Yeah. Okay.